Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to add the base game spawnable items as well as custom physics materials to objects in your own Bone Lab levels. First thing we have to do is grab the pallet with the base game spawnables from the Lava Gang Discord. If you come to the SDK channel, there's a post from Chemobi1. You can come down here and here's your download link for this pallet. Alright, we're going to go ahead and jump into the editor. If you don't know how to set up a modding project at all, you can click on this card up here in the top right and the first few minutes of this tutorial will show you how to do that. Um, this is not meant to be a level design tutorial. This is the bare minimum I needed to gray box a level out to just get in and play around. I will just really quickly go over what I had to do to get this little level going in Bone Lab and uh, I'll leave the rest of the actual level design stuff up to you and your taste. Okay, so with a brand new scene, all I did was remove everything except the directional light that I'm going to use as my light source here. For my directional light, I set it to mixed mode. That way you get dynamic shadows mixed with your uh, baked shadows for your static objects in your scene here. Every bit of geometry that you see in the level is just a 3D object cube. It's fast to go ahead and lay things out that way, and they already have a collider associated with them. If I click on that, box collider, that's for each one of these. You just move them and scale them like you want for now. One requirement for Bone Lab levels is that you have a player marker, which they use as a player start. It's easy to make. You just create empty. You now you have an empty game object, and you give it the player marker script over here at app component. Now for all the static geometry in my level, you actually want to make sure that you set it as static. Okay, and you want to make sure that you go up here to the corner and check static for all of your static level geometry. That way it knows um, what to bake when you bake your lights. Alright, I'm just going to click off in the middle of nowhere. I don't have a skybox in here, it'll just be black in the game. Um, just because I don't care for this test level. All you need to do is invert scale a cube or a sphere or whatever you want to do and put a texture on there. To get the base game spawnable items in our project here, we want to go to stress level zero, void tools, and then import palette. And all you're going to do, it's not going to be the same as mine here, but just go find where you saved that palette from the Discord before. Click on it, it'll import. Mine, I didn't pick one, so it's I've already got it here. And then when you have your asset warehouse open, this was mine for the mod, and then you'll have Bone Lab content with all your spawnables. To actually place them in a level, you're just going to make another empty game object. Go over here to add component, and you're going to add the spawnable crate placer. And then you're going to come here to spawnable crate reference, and this is going to be the item that you want to spawn. So whatever, we'll just pick Concrete Barrier, okay, you can see it. All these void meshes that you see here are because they don't have preview meshes associated with these yet, but you can use this blue volume here as a general size. The other thing I'm going to show you is how to add a custom physics material. So we'll click on this pad that I've got here that I'm using as a trampoline, and I've got, when you click on it and you come down to its physics collider, there'll be a section here. Um, with a new one it'll have none and you can actually give it some type of physics material and to create one you just right click down here in your assets go to create and then physic material so we'll click on trampoline you've got a, only a few fields to play around with here you've got dynamic and static friction you can play around with those and read up on them if you want dynamic friction is the friction that two surfaces experience when they're moving when there's relative motion between them Static friction is if something's just sitting still, how much it, you'd have to overcome to get it moving. Bounciness is a way to describe how much energy is conserved when a collision happens between these two objects. So it's only a zero to a one. At a one, everything is reflected back. You don't lose any to this bounce, right? It doesn't absorb anything. So however hard you threw it into it, it's gonna come back out that hard. That's if you set the combine value to maximum. You can read up on this in the Unity um, documents there about multiply, maximum, average, that kind of thing. If you set it max, it's going to take the upper value of the two objects that are colliding. 
So given that I wanted this to be a, a trampoline to play around on, I set it to maximum and I set it to a one. That way it's always going to return all the energy back. I leave the friction combine at multiply because in their best in the stress level zero documentation for best practices, they mentioned that they also use multiply for their friction combine. I've zoomed back out so we can get a good view of the full level here. I'm going to go to window AI navigation. You see we've already got a nav mesh baked. This is what your AI enemies will need to be able to move around and chase you, that kind of thing. Uh, these settings here, probably okay. They do mention that in their best, the stress level zero documentation for best practices, I believe it's 30 degrees for a max slope. So I've set that here. And then you're just going to click bake. And then you should be able to come and inspect. Once you're done, you'll get something like this. And this blue is your walkable surfaces. And you see that they could walk up that slope. So if you wanted to make sure they could get up a ramp or upstairs or whatever, you're able to check it here. The next thing I did in my case, because I've got my directional light set to mixed mode, was bake my lighting. So I came up to window, and then you go to rendering, lighting. At this point, you're going to want to reference that stress level zero documentation for best practices. Uh, they'll have settings here that they recommend you use for baking your lighting. And then you're just going to hit generate lighting. We've got our lighting baked. The last thing we're going to do is add our level crate to our palette. So stress level zero, void tools, asset warehouse. Here's their spawnable content palette. So we'll just go ahead and close that. Uh, and here's our mod palette that we've been using. So we'll click on that. And we'll make sure we've got the inspector open over here on the side. I've already added it, but you would just say add crate. Then you're going to change from spawnable crate to level crate. And then in asset reference, you're going to go find your scene. Mine was called sample scene. And you want the actual scene here. It's giving me an error saying that it already exists because I've made one, but for you, they won't happen. And you'd click create. Now here, since we've got two separate palettes here, it's given us this warning, multiple palettes detected, back disabled. All you have to do is select your palette for your mod, and then come over here and say pack for PC or pack for quest. Okay, it pops your window where it built your palette. You're gonna click one level in, and you'll get to the folder with your author name and the name of the palette. You're gonna just select that, uh, copy, then you're gonna go to your users, your username, app data, local low, stress level zero, bone lab, mods. You see I've already been putting this in here because I'm working on it. I'm just going to paste over it. And then we go test. Alright, let's go to mod levels. There's our sample map. There we go. We've got all of our items in here. They're interactable. Looks good. All right.